What's going on guys, it's Suk and I am back with a brand new video on Super Duper Tech. Now in today's video, I'll be bringing you my full and in-depth review of the 2019 base model 16 inch MacBook Pro. I do also want to thank you guys for the growth that we've seen on the channel as of late and as always we are on the road to 5,000 subscribers and if you are new around here then I must ask you to hit the subscribe button clicking the bell to be notified of when I upload any of my new videos. But without any further ado, let's hit the titles. So let's start by talking about what actually comes included with this MacBook Pro. Included is a 96 watt USB-C charger which will get the MacBook to a complete charge from 0 to 100% in just under 3 hours. Also battery life on this model has improved slightly from what we had seen previously on the 15 inch model. On average I get close to around 9.5 hours now that includes a light mix of photo editing, web browsing, video streaming and the odd document production. Though if you are doing any sort of video editing, animation work or web development you can expect the battery life to drastically shoot down as sometimes I've been able to drain the battery on this machine in around 5.5 hours. I really wish Apple would implement some variant of fast charging now I know three hours to charge a battery the size of that fan in this machine isn't too long but when you factor in that we have this technology on their iPhone that I would much like to see it brought over to their MacBook lineup I mean hey maybe we'll see it when they unveil their arm based MacBook products down the line especially when you factor in that there are other manufacturers who have implemented this technology in some of their laptops so this new generation of 16 inch MacBook Pro starts off with a 2.6 gigahertz hexa-core Intel i7 processor which can be upgraded to a beefy 2.4 gigahertz octa-core Intel i9 processor which is actually capable of turbo boost speeds up to 5 gigahertz. Therefore if you need more power then you will have to upgrade the machine when you purchase it through the configurator on Apple's website. I will soon have variants of all of these MacBook Pro models in very soon and will be testing them over the coming weeks and if you are yet to hit the subscribe button then go ahead and do so clicking the bell to be notified of when I upload any of my new videos. Now if you don't need this much power and would rather portability then click the card in the top right corner to go and check out my review of the 13 inch MacBook Pro. But with that being said, the model that I am reviewing here is the base i7 which has 6 cores not 8 and is capable of turbo boost speeds in excess of 4.5 GHz. Now due to the redesign of the internal components and the larger heatsink and fans, you're actually able to hit those turbo boost speeds for a little longer than you would have with the 15 inch model from earlier that year. This MacBook did not show any signs of thermal throttling as it was able to sustain its base clock speed of 2 6 GHz when running stress test Prime 95 for more than 30 minutes. In fact, not only did it sustain that base speed, it exceeded it, running on average at around 4 GHz throughout that test, and more so, it did this when running at temperatures of around 70 degrees Celsius. If you are interested in seeing the results that I got when benchmarking this MacBook Pro, then be sure to click the card in the top right corner to be taken to a video in which I exported full HD and 4K video along with running a number of different tests. Now these tests were designed to stress the CPU, GPU, RAM and more. Or of course you can click the links down below in the description. As standard you will get 16GB of DDR4 RAM which is clocked at a speed of 2666MHz. Now this can be once again upgraded through Apple's configurator to up to 64 gigabytes which is interesting as it was only a few years ago when Apple said that upgrading to 32 gigabytes would impact battery life. This new generation of MacBook Pro introduces AMD's latest dedicated graphics card based off of their RDNA architecture which is created using a 7 nanometer processor. Now this in turn can deliver shocking improvements over the last generation. To showcase how much of an improvement this has made I uploaded a separate video in which I played a handful of top tier games on this machine to see what it was capable of doing. Now if you would like to see that then click the card in the top right corner to be taken to that video. As always links can also be found down below in the description. But in short, yes, yes you can play games on these MacBook Pro models and you can do so having a decent time but you won't actually see the frame rates above 60fps as the display maxes out at 60hz. 
Talking about the display on this new MacBook Pro model, you will find a 16 inch screen which has the same 500 nit brightness and can display images from the P3 color spectrum as with previous iterations. And you can also expect Apple's True Tone technology to make its return. With an increase in screen size from 15.4 to 16 inches, it's also had a slight increase in resolution up to 3072 by 1920. This means this MacBook Pro has a pixel density of 226 pixels per inch. We have a slimming of the bezels around the screen, though this time it's not quite as futuristic as many concept artists have envisioned, but nevertheless it's a welcome change. Looking at the design of this MacBook Pro, it follows the same design trend set back in 2016 when the MacBook Pro was redesigned and introduced us to the Thunderbolt 3 ports and the touch bar. Now the touch bar is still here, but this time we have a physical escape key and a separate power button, just like we've seen with the new MacBook Air models. Also, this MacBook Pro has gotten slightly thicker and heavier when compared to its predecessor, the 15-inch MacBook Pro. Now, this is mainly to accommodate for a larger 100 watt hour battery and the one feature that I'm sure you're all aware of, the new Magic Keyboard, which has finally done away with the butterfly keyboard and has gone back to the traditional scissor switch mechanism. Though I personally enjoyed using the butterfly keyboard and haven't been subject to any failure, I can definitely say that the extra key travel has made typing on this MacBook Pro a pleasant experience. It still feels relatively similar but just different enough that many will enjoy it or at least more over the butterfly switch found in the MacBook models from 2016 up until this model. The scissor switches are self-clearing meaning that any debris or dust that may get stuck or lodged into them will eventually get dislodged from the keyboard and will perform as intended. So if you've been waiting out to purchase a MacBook but have held off due to the keyboard, the time waiting may very well have come to an end. Like we have had in previous generations, the main method of input and output is Thunderbolt 3 in the shape of USB-C, meaning that you have an enormous amount of bandwidth that can be used for connecting anything from 4, 5 and even 6K displays, external GPUs and other peripherals all at the same time from charging from any of those ports. And with the 16 inch MacBook Pro, we have four of them. There are two on the left of the device and two on the right, along with a standard 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Though personally, I would have thought that with the 16 inch model, Apple would introduce up to six of these ports as opposed to four, as you can get four Thunderbolt 3 ports on the higher spec 13 inch MacBook Pro, along with two on the entry MacBook Pro and Air. The speakers on this new generation of MacBook Pro are nothing short of phenomenal. It's crazy that something of this size can deliver such well-balanced audio. The volume it can deliver is high. So high in fact that other than for testing purposes that I don't think I've ever needed to use maximum volume. It has a surprisingly good amount of low end which is something you don't normally hear from laptops of this size, shape and weight. This MacBook uses a six speaker system which has two force cancelling woofers which means that when the volume is cranked up there is little to no discernible loss in quality. Not only this, the chassis does not rattle or make any annoying vibrating sounds and because of this, Apple also claim support for Dolby Atmos. And if you're wondering how good do these speakers sound, well take a quick listen to this. Another area on this MacBook Pro which has been drastically improved is the built-in microphones. They now use a three microphone array which effectively has the ability to cancel out any unintended background noise. Using directional beamforming technology to pick out the audio of the individuals using the MacBook, this device makes FaceTime phone calls and general voice recording sound almost as if you're using an external microphone. 
But sadly, Apple had to bring us back to earth by sticking with the same 720p FaceTime HD camera. And honestly, I find this really frustrating how Apple can give us such amazing microphones and speakers and then leave out the webcam. This is pretty much the same webcam that Apple have been using for more than a decade. And by God, does it need an upgrade? Here, yeah, watch this and you'll understand what I'm talking about. You'll also be able to tell what the microphones on this MacBook Pro sound like. So guys, what do you think of the sound quality coming from the microphones on the 2019 16-inch MacBook Pro? Of course, with this MacBook Pro, we have also got the same 720p webcam as we've had with MacBooks, as I've said before, for the best part of almost a decade, ever since 2012. Um, but yeah, what are your thoughts on the sound quality? Of course, they've had a sizable increase uh, and improvement since the previous generation. Um, but what do you think, especially being able to hear it? If you've watched any of my previous videos, then you'll understand how much I love the trackpad on Macs. And going from one strength to another, the glass surface on these trackpads is an amazing and effortless way of interacting with macOS and of course getting tasks complete. Now whether that be scrolling down a document or scrubbing through a video timeline, the trackpad on all MacBooks, especially this MacBook Pro, is a massive plus and it's one of those things that you honestly have to experience for yourself. In fact, it's actually the same size as the trackpad that Apple sell with their desktop lineup of computers. Of course, you've got the software that this MacBook Pro runs. Now this MacBook runs macOS Catalina, which brings over new features such as Sidecar and the abilities that it will bring when paired up to an iPad running iPadOS. Not to mention the updated and redesigned Find My application, which now means that if your MacBook was to ever get stolen or misplaced, that it will emit a signal to nearby devices, thus allowing it to be found. With continued software support for at least half a decade, this MacBook Pro is most likely going to age very well. So if you've been holding out for a brand new MacBook Pro and you're after something that's really powerful or if you wanted to upgrade it, I mean how you can upgrade this MacBook Pro and have up to 8 terabytes of internal SSD storage. If you wasn't too sure about the butterfly keyboard and you didn't want to run into any issues, at least now, rest assured, you won't be running into any of those issues. If you're interested in seeing what the most expensive version of this MacBook Pro is like, with everything upgraded from the processor, RAM, storage, graphics and more, then be sure to subscribe to the channel to see that video. But in a nutshell, the microphones and speakers sound amazing, though crippled by that webcam. It's got a great battery life, brilliant display, a good keyboard and industry leading trackpad and industry leading trackpad and some of the best IO ports available. Yeah, it's a solid Yeah, it's a solid buy, but as long as you're going to be using it for its power. Yeah, it's a solid buy, but as long as you're going to be using it for the power. Yeah, it's a solid buy, and if you're going to be using it for its power, then yeah, I could easily recommend it to you. So that will be all for today's video. If you've got any questions with anything you've seen, then be sure to leave them down below in the comment section, or alternatively, you can hit me up on my social media, links to which can be found down below in the description. Once again, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one.